Now I want to take a look at how we could use these graphs of systems of inequalities to actually solve problems in the real world, believe it or not. And these are known as linear programming questions. Here's the basic idea. Suppose you have like a business, for example, and you want to maximize profits, okay, or minimize costs. Well, that's going to require you to try to, you know, get the biggest value a certain function can take on. But there are constraints. I mean, you don't have sort of infinite resources. You don't have sort of infinite wealth. You don't have sort of infinite, uh, you know, human power to sort of do your stuff. So you have these constraints. But given those constraints, you want to, for example, maximize profit or minimize costs or maximize something else. So how do you actually maximize or minimize some linear function if you have constraints? Let me illustrate this with a particular numerical example, and then we'll take a look at some actual real world problems. So suppose that I want to maximize, let's say, profit. And suppose profit is given by x plus 5y. So if you give me a point x and y, I can find the profit by just plugging in here, and that tells me what the profit is. OK, but there's some constraints. And here are the constraints. So this is with constraints that 5x plus 8y is less than or equal to 120. So there's some constraint on, on something. And then 7x plus 16y less than or equal to, let's say, 192. And there's some other constraints. x cannot be negative. Maybe x is the number of workers you have. And y cannot be negative. Maybe that's the number of buildings you rent or something. OK, now with all these constraints, the question is, what are the values for x and y that make this as big as possible? Well, I'm going to tell you how this works using linear programming. In fact, the first thing you have to do is graph this region and see what this region looks like. Now, that's actually going to be a teeny bit involved because I've got to graph this inequality, that inequality, this inequality, and that inequality. A lot of inequalities that need to be graphed. So let's get going. Well, if I set up my axes, let's say I do it just like this. Then what I'm going to do is first I'll just graph this line and then figure out how the shading goes and, and so on and so forth. So what do I do here? Well, for this line, what I might want to do is just find the intercepts. So if, if I let um, y equal 0, that's going to show me where the x-intercept is. Now watch this. So I just let put in 0 for y. So that goes away. When I see 5x, and let's just pretend it equals 120, so therefore x would be 24. So I see that x would be x24 which let's say is way over here. Let me use a different color. This is 24. So this is the point uh, 24 comma 0. That's the x-intercept for this graph. How would I find the y-intercept for that graph? I would let x equal 0. So look back at this picture. I let x equal 0. And I see 8y would equal 120. So if I divide both sides by 8, I would see that y would equal 15. So in fact, I would see I'd go up to 15 here. Let me put 15 here. So this is a 0 comma 15. 0 comma 15. So we can see what the line is. I can make it a solid line because I'm allowed to actually have equality. Now, I could draw the line all the way out to here. But I'm going to actually do something a little bit tricky. I'm going to notice that, in fact, x has to be positive and y has to be positive. So in fact, I'm not going to be looking in this region at all. I'm only looking at the first quadrant, positive x and positive y. So I'm only going to connect these points right in between, since I know that's where my region is going to be living anyway. So there's that picture. Of course, I keep going, but I know I'm going to get rid of those because of these conditions. Now, do I go below or above? Well, put in 0, 0, and see. If I put in 0, 0, I see that, in fact, 0 is less than or equal to 120. So I'm going to color below. So I'm going to color below. So I'll remember that. I'm not going to actually do that right now, but I'm going to remember I'm going to color below. Now, let's pick another color here and look at this line. Well, I'm going to do the same procedure. If I let, y, uh, let x be 0, so I'm going to find out where this intersects the y-axis, I just divide both sides by 16, and I see y would equal in this case, 12. So I come over here and put a 12. So this is the point uh, 0, comma 12. And now if I want to find the x-intercept, I put y equal to 0. And I see 7x would equal 192. If I divide both sides by 7, I would see that x would be around 27.4 something. So let's put that over here. This would be 
27.4 something comma zero. And again, I can't go out of these regions, so I might as well just connect these two points right in the first quadrant because of these conditions. X has to be positive, so I'm to the right of the y-axis. Y has to be positive, so I'm above the x-axis. So let's not even bother putting anything else. So there it is. Now, do I cover color below or above? Put in 0, 0, and I see 0 is less than 190. So I want below. So where's the intersection of all these things? I've got to be in the first quadrant, and I have to be below the green, and I have to be below the red. So that region actually is this region right here. Below both of them at the same time and in the first quadrant. And you can see that region actually is just a whole bunch of little line segments put together to make this shape. This line segment, and this point of course is 0, 0, that's the origin. Then this line segment, and then this line segment up to this point right there, the point of intersection of those two lines, and then this line segment up to this point. Now here's the really cool fact. If you are trying to maximize or minimize a function that's linear, no squares, no cubes, no square roots, no logs, nothing, well then if you think about it, let's see if I've got something here to show you. It would just be a plane. And if I put a plane, I'm going to cover this up, but if I put a plane and tilt it on top of it, if you think about how that shape would be, it turns out that the minimum and maximum are actually going to occur at one of these vertices. So in fact, if you want to find the minimum or maximum of a linear function, linear programming tells you you just need to look at the vertices and plug those vertices in, and the biggest one will give you the biggest value you can take, and the smallest one will give you the smallest value you can take. So one thing I need, by the way, is to find the intersection of those two lines. So one thing I've got to do is actually solve these two equations Five x plus eight y equals 120, and then seven x plus 16 y equals 192. I have to actually solve them using any kind of method you want to, in order to find out what this value is. One thing you can do, for example, is multiply this equation through by, let's say, two. If I did that, I'm going to multiply this through by two. If I did that, what would I see? I would see. 10x plus 16y equals 240. And now if I subtract, let's take uh, this and subtract that, this and subtract that, this and subtract that, I'd see 3x, and notice these drop out, so I'm using the, um, the uh, elimination method, and this minus that equals 48. So that tells me that x would have to be 16. And I can now take that value for x, plug it back into one of these equations, and solve for y. And I would see, if you work this out, that y equals 5. I'll let you check that. So it looks like x is 16 right here, and, and y is 5. Does that make sense? It sort of makes sense. This looks like 16 if this is 24. If this is 12, that could certainly be 5. So at least my, my picture is reasonable. So I actually had to solve those things simultaneously to find that particular point. Now I've got how many points? Just look at the colored region. Don't look at these points out here. Just look at the colored region. I've got this point, that point, that point, and that point. One of those vertices will represent the maximum value this linear function takes on. The other one will represent the minimum value. So if you want the maximum or minimum value of a linear function with constraints that are straight lines like this, you just need to look at the vertices. So let's just plug in 0, 12 into xy. If I do that, what would I see? So in fact, let me just draw a little mock-up of this little mock-up of that region. Oops, well, that was a lousy mock-up. This is supposed to be the mock-up of this. And I'm just going to put the values of p at each of these vertex, vertices. So if I plug in 0 for x and 12 here for y, I would see 60 for p. So p would equal 60 at this point. If I plug in 0, 0, I just see 0. So p would equal 0, 0 profit here. If I plug in 24, 0, 24, 0, I see 24. And if I plug in 16, 5, so 16, 5, and work that out, we'd see 41. So what's the maximum profit we could have given this constraint? Well, it turns out the answer seems to be right here. When x equals 0 and y equals 12, the profit is 60. 
Where's the minimum profit? I can get that two. Profit is zero if I have zero, zero. So in fact, the way to sort of solve a linear programming problem, that's where you're given a linear function that you want to either maximize or minimize, make it really big or really small, with certain constraints, is to first graph the constraints and you get some region, and then take a look at all the vertices of that region, find those coordinates, in which case that sometimes might require you to solve some equations simultaneously to find out where they meet. But once you have that, then just plug in each of those vertices that you found into here. And the biggest value is the maximum. The maximum can never happen inside here or anywhere else. It will happen at one of these points. So actually, linear programming is pretty easy. You just find the vertices of the boundary region you have, given by the constraints, plug those values back into this thing you're trying to make big or small, and the biggest value is the biggest value everywhere. The smallest value is the smallest value everywhere. We'll take a look at some really neat real-world applications of this coming up next. So I'll see you there.